Hey there Paper Geeks and Glitter Nerds, it's Senna and this week's card is a birthday card featuring a whole lot of balloons. Now here you see all my cutouts, they were made on the scan and cut and I can show you how I do this in a other video. If you want to, please tell me in the comments so I know that there's an interest. They are cut out of Nina Classic Crest since I'm gonna color them in with my uh, alcohol markers and I'm gonna stamp them out with a uh, memento color. Uh, it is not quite crunchy leaf, but it's as close as it gets, I guess. I was trying out this notion that you could stamp with anything other than black and color in. Now, I don't particularly like the brown ones. Now that I have tried out river rock and uh, jellyfish. Is it just jellyfish? I think it's just jellyfish from Lawn Fawn. I know that um, I prefer those two uh, to the uh, brown versions, uh, even the black ones. So here we go stamping. I'm just checking if every critter is put into the uh, the corresponding hole as it is. Um, and then I can stamp them out close to perfectly at least. Um, I like this technique actually. Um, and at the moment I'm working on making cut files for all my stamps, but it's a slow process. But once they're done, it is so nice, because I don't need to fussy cut. Maybe a little bit, if they get a little bit crooked. Um, this will be a slimline card, and therefore I need a lot of items. Or was it that I wanted a lot of items, and therefore I needed a slimline card to fit them all? I'm uncertain about that one. But it is a stunning card, um, nevertheless, because of all the details. And here you get a look at my template that I made uh, prior to uh, to printing and cutting and all that. Uh, I made the uh, scallop panel myself in uh, canvas for a brother scanning cut, and this Bristol paper is just plainly cut on my uh, paper trimmer. The stencils are homemade. Um, this one was used. I used a dye from MFT to make it, but the the cloud one, that's the word. The cloud one I made myself cutting it by hand. I am planning on making a cut file and making a new one um, in some th uh, slightly thicker plastic. But I'm just gonna make an, a very easy background with some distress inks. It's very s self explanatory. You've seen it a hundred times, I bet. Here is the pattern paper that inspired the colors I'm going to pick for the balloons. I'm going to add a few extras, but the pink one and the turquoise one were primary uh, for me to get in the card because of this paper. Now, I originally wanted to make the scallop panel in this paper, but I read somewhere that um, thick glitter cardstock can break your knife. Uh, for your brother scanning cut and they're just too expensive for me to even try so I worked out this other solution where I made the scallop panel in white and then there would be basically more of the balloon panel in the background. I think it worked out quite nicely. I am planning on making a, a scallop uh, panel with smaller scallops in the future but everything went a bit fast. 
And now the coloring. As I've said before, and I keep feeling this way, is that I am not the best teacher for uh, coloring. Maybe you can get some inspiration, or maybe you can see what you shouldn't do watching me color these, but uh, I'm nevertheless going to leave you with the music just and stop babbling, if I can.
now that all the critters are done, I am once again trying to space them out on my card, and I decided I needed a sentiment that would stand out, so I brought out this die from Free Scopes, which is Hooray, in Danish. And I'm gonna cut it from this glitter paper. Um, because the recipient also loves glitter. So. And this greenish color kind of fit with the background, uh, the balloon background, that is. So. I needed it for the spacing of everything.
And here's one of those human errors uh, where I forgot to write down the color combination I used for this balloon. Um, I have, from the video, figured out that it was Y35 and Y38, and I think, but I'm not certain, but from the color I'm seeing and my color chart, I believe the, the lightest color is Y45. Believe so. Doing this and afterwards watching it while I was editing this video, I kept thinking, why do I always have to do things the hard way? Why indeed? I am going to put a tr real string on every single balloon for this card. And it's gonna take a while. And don't worry, you won't have to watch it all. And some of it I have sped up a whole lot. But the idea is, you wrap the string around the bottom of the balloon and then you secure it on the back side with first red tape and then this piece of uh, foam tape. And mostly it holds. I think I have one balloon where the string falls off. Mm. So, um, well, enjoy the music.
And here's another lesson. And I learned it the hard way, as you should with anything. Stamp the face back in before you color it. Because seeing anything when you've colored it is seriously hard. I and and I don't have a steady hand, so some of these faces are horrendous in my opinion. Of course, the recipient didn't note it. But uh, then again, I knew how it was supposed to look, so maybe that's why I'm judging me. But uh, that's why, from now on, when I do this uh, no-line, semi-line coloring, I will stamp the face with a darker ink before I go to color it. Just to make it all easier on me. And I had stamped it a tiny bit crooked on the fox's tail and the brown line on the white was just undeniably annoying. So, just fixing him up a bit. Since I don't have a desert sand memento marker, I couldn't really go around every object like I do when uh, they have black outlines, but that's just it, I guess. I don't even know if they exist. I hope they do. I hope to color match with my uh, new lawn phonics. And I decided to add some more dimension to my hooray. And that's going to take a tiny bit of time, as always. I never uh, try to cut out the tails of the mice from Lawn Fawn, so I have to give them a new tail, and that will be the same black string as the balloons. That will cause a tiny problem uh, with the flying mice, the uh, mouse, the grey one at the top, since uh, you will think that his tail is actually a balloon string. So I have to go and get some thicker embroidery floss, I think. This is extremely thin. And uh, I would have liked something a little bit thicker, but I didn't have any on hand, so you work with what you got. But I used the same process as I did with the balloons, the red tape, and then a piece of uh, uh, foam tape afterwards. Easy peasy, except for the scale. And when the tails are done, I'm going to have to put foam tape on everything getting the balloons in place, collecting the strings so it looks like the critters are holding them and it's gonna take a while and I really don't have anything clever to say about the process I think it'll be easier for you to just watch me oh see, the tail came off oh. as crafters we do have the weirdest problems, don't we?
and this concludes this week's card. Now it's hard to show you the full card on video or on photo because of the format, but this is it and I tell you it looks wonderful when I see it at my friend's house on the shelf because it takes up very little space but it's tall it fills up uh, the shelf very nicely. Well until next time I hope you'll be having a good day evening or night. <laughs>